In this demo, we're going to learn about the evolution of Kubernetes from within Cisco. We started out with a great product called Cisco Container Platform, and we still sell it today, and it's a great standalone product. However, we learned that people really want more of an integrated solution, somewhere where they can look on a single dashboard and see all the elements they want to manage. So welcome to the near future. This is Intersight Kubernetes Service as part of Intersight. So one of the things you'll notice is that this is more like what you'll see in cloud services or public cloud services, where you can utilize or any of the combination of configuration items that you see here. Things like servers and chassis and fabric interconnects and hyperflex. But we've added on top of that Kubernetes. And what you're going to see here in the near future is that there are more and more services that you can consume from within this dashboard. This dashboard is the future of data center and cloud from within Cisco. So let's talk a little bit about Kubernetes. Let's talk about some of the requirements needed to get Kubernetes working within Intersight. The first thing you have to determine is where you want to deploy the dashboard. Do you want it to be on-prem or in the cloud? For the purposes of our tech preview coming up, we're only going to support in the cloud. So let's take that scenario here. So first thing you're going to need is something called Intersight Assist. Intersight Assist is a small VM that goes into vCenter. So I've, I've deployed the Assist here, and it is already installed, and I can see it right here. There's not much information from within this particular console. Really, all you have is the device ID, and you'll have a claim code here when it's not already claimed. Intersight Assist's purpose is to constantly listen to the cloud dashboard and see if there's any commands that are needed to run on-prem. On so that's really all this does. And the way that we implement this is we take that device ID and claim code and go over to the Intersight dashboard down to Devices and we click claim a new device. When we do that, we just put the device ID and claim code and click claim. When that's done, you'll see Intersight Assist right here. The next thing we have to do is claim the vCenter. So you can see I've already done that here, but if I didn't, the way that you do it is claim a new device, but this time claim through Intersight Assist. When you do that, it shows you the Intersight Assist you want to use, and then it shows you the vCenter information. You fill that out, click claim, and what you'll see is that that device will pop up over here. There's a couple other things you have to do before you'll see virtualization and Kubernetes in the Intersight dashboard. And those are, you have to go down to licensing and select premier license as the tier. Additionally, you have to go to servers and click on these little dots and say set license tier and then set the license tier to premier. Once that's done, you'll start to see virtualization and Kubernetes on the left-hand side here. You can verify that your vCenter is set up by clicking on any one of these top-level items like clusters, hosts, virtual machines, or data store. So I'm going to click on virtual machines, and I'll see a bunch of my virtual machines here. Now I know I'm ready for the Kubernetes cluster. Let's get started adding a cluster in IKS. You're going to go over here to the right-hand side and say Add Cluster. On the left-hand side, you see all the different steps that there are in order to create a cluster, so you always know where you are in the process. On the General tab, we can click on Organization, and you can pick the organization that you want to deploy your cluster to. Based on your role-based access control, you may have access to one or more orgs. So let's create a name. We're going to call this SEVT dash, and let me just make it lowercase, SEVT dash cluster dash one. Now I'm going to select a version. So you notice one pops up right away. These are policies, and these policies you can create and use any, any, in any cluster you want. So you only have to create it once. So I'm just going to click on Kubernetes 1.18. You have the option to add a tag here. So I'm going to add kubver, and I'm going to say 1.18. And what this does is it's a tag within Intersight. So now when I search in my clusters, if I want to find all the Kubernetes that I've tagged with kubver 1.18, I could do this very easily. And you could add any tag you want. It's really for organization. So let me click Next. Now it's asking me for some cluster configuration parameters. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the IP pool I want to use. Now, if I didn't know which one I want to use, I can click on the I on the right-hand side. And what that does is it tells me the parameters that are inside there 
inside the policy that I've selected. So I know this is the one I want to use, so I'm just going to select it. Now, load balancers is how many IPs do you want to use out of that pool for load balancers? I'll select three to start out. Now it's going to ask me for my IKS user uh, SSH, I mean my SSH user, which I'm going to make IKS user. I'm just going to paste that key right into here. There we go. Now, system configuration policy has things like time zone, DNS domain name, DNS server, NTP server. And again, I don't have to enter these in every time. I can just select a policy. So I'm just going to select the policy I know I want. And to verify that, I can just click the plus and see that it was added. Now, network policy is what you're going to define the subnets for your service and your pod network. If you're unfamiliar with Kubernetes, then service network is the one that's external to your Kubernetes cluster and can access services within Kubernetes. The pod network is internal to Kubernetes and is just used internally to kind of network the pods together. So let's select a policy there too. And again, you can verify by clicking the plus. So I'm just going to click next now. Now it's gonna ask us to actually set up the cluster, the master and the worker nodes. So I'm gonna hit the plus here. I'm gonna select my infrastructure provider as the SXI. I'm gonna select an instance type. Now these instance types you can create by clicking create new. Now I've already created an instance type and we can look at it. And what this one is saying is that I've set my CPU to four, my disk size to 40 and my memory to 16 gigs. And I'm calling this IKS small. I could, I could change that size to whatever I want or create several different policies for this and then I can just select them here. So let me select IKS small. Now I can have how many masters I want. Do I want to have multi-master? I'm just going to keep it at a single master right now. I already have my pool selected. Now this has Kubernetes labels. So these aren't the labels inside of uh, Intersight. These are the labels in Kubernetes. So on a node base, this could be used to select the uh, node pools that you want to use for certain things, for certain workloads. So let's say I wanted to type GPU. If I put type GPU and this actually had a GPU in it, then I could actually use those sel as selectors for when I want to deploy a workload that has GPUs. So this is just one UK use case for Kubernetes labels. So I can do the same thing here too. I'll give it a name. I'll call it uh, SEVT worker dash worker. That's good. And I will call, and I, I want three different um, worker nodes. That's fine. I'll select my IP pool like I did before. And again, maybe I'll put type is GPU just for, just to add some kind of label. So I'll hit add there and I just click next. Now it's going to ask or provide um, things for Docker. And these are generalized parameters that could be used for things like proxy or for trusted registries or untrusted registries. If you have something that's unsigned, maybe you have a harbor registry that doesn't have a cert yet, you might need to put an IP address in there. But these are just general parameters that every Kubernetes uh, implementation has. And we don't really need any of them by default, so we're just going to click Next. If we had some add-ons, then this is where you'd select them. And the type of add-ons that we have are things like uh, elk stacks and Prometheus and Harbor registries. So those are the types of things we're going to have, and we're going to add more and more, but we don't have these ready yet. So we're just going to click next. So this last page here is just going to give you information about what's going to be deployed. So now I'm going to click deploy and it's going to actually start the deploy. So here you can see cluster was successfully deployed. And if I go in this little twirling one, I can see inside to what it's trying to do. So now you can see each one of the steps as they occur. And in a little bit, we'll see that this is actually deployed on top of, uh, on top of VMware. So we'll check back in a, in a couple minutes and, and look at that. The other thing I wanted to mention about um, this implementation inside of Intersight is all the great features of Intersight that are gonna be available together. So the whole idea is to create a single dashboard where everybody can go and, and utilize all these different features and we can get information from one service to the other. And we could make decisions based on that. So I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen you know, as we go further and further in this Intersight journey. But be sure that Intersight is the future 
and it's where we're where we're adding all of these features. So get very excited because this is really, really exciting to me and it should be exciting to you. Okay, so let's just wait a few seconds and we will see how this deployed. After your cluster is deployed, you'll see the page here, which lists all of your different nodes and whether what their state is and their IP addresses. You can also go up to actions and click download kubeconfig so you can use kubectl command. Additionally, you could edit your add-ons, you can undeploy and delete from here. So if I go over now to a command line and run the kubectl command, I can see that I can connect to this cluster and you can see there's IKS namespaces and kube system namespaces. So we can see everything's installed and working as it should. And we have our first cluster up and running. Thanks for taking the time, time with me today. I look forward to seeing what all of you think about this solution.